Hello everybody, that's Goran Pables and Aloy Andalus from Effective TDs and today we will see TP and Houdini. We will compare how to do rigid body simulation in TP and how we will do the same in um, Houdini. We will do a scatter of objects on a plane, we will add gravity and see the rigid bodies options that we have in TP and do the same in Houdini. Right, so we just do very very basic comparison on the very basic stuff. Yeah, so let's just start in TP side first. Uh, we have here some groups already created. We will we want to scatter some objects over a plane. So let's uh, we need a node that we want to read, and we will create a plane where we want our objects to be scattered. Right. So for all the Houdini guys, um, we're creating a plane inside Max, but then we have a deep thinking particle plugin where we have to import the the plane into that plugin environment, which is that window that you see with the green nodes where Eloy is um, maneuvering in. Um, so that would be like a uh, import into DOP your collider, so to say. Um, yeah, so we just assign the, the plane to the node. We need to read the surface. Right now, this node is only reading uh, pivot information about this node. Uh, point point information. If we want to read the surface, we need to connect these to a surface position operator. And right now from here we have information about vertex, edge and face. So we will be reading the face of this plane. And we will create particles. We have a generator to create all types of particles. We will create a position board, is a basic um, generator of particles. And we will assign these particles to a group. I don't know if in Houdini you have groups. Yeah, you have. Uh, so we will assign these to spheres. And we want this to be created on which position? Right now, by default, it's at 0, 0 because we didn't assign anything. We should see something at 0, 0. We have it here. Yeah. Uh, if we want to, to see it on the surface of the plane, we will assign it to the position. So this is reading the surface of this node. Right. So this, all these three nodes together are like the pop emitter um, in Houdini. POP stands for? Uh, particle operators. <laughs> okay, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know either. Okay. Um, so we will assign, um, we want only to, us to have 500 um, particles there. We create a pistol shot, we have different types if we want to create it over time, but we only wanted to create it at once. Right. And life has span, we don't want this to die, so we will create a big number. Yeah. So the position born creates lifespan in frames, while there's a matter waves that does exactly those three things in one node, and that is in seconds for whatever reason they did two different life setups. Yeah, and we can assign right now a spheres to that, and then we will see the same on how to do it on, on Houdini. So to assign any shape, we have a shape, makes sense, and we have a standard shapes. We, you can use Geom instance if you want to assign a specific shape that you have in your scene, but standard shape has some default ones, like cubes and spheres, so you select spheres, and we will see some small spheres. Right. Do then, you have any control over the resolution of those spheres? No. Okay. If you want to add more resolution, right. you will create your own sphere in 3ds Max and use instead. Right. So that's like the sphere primitive object in Houdini, where it's just like one resolution. I guess. Yeah. Uh, the primitive, but it's like a polygon, or it's. No, it's it's. I think it's just a calculated kind of sphere. Okay. So now uh, we can adjust the size uh, with the size that we have by default here we will have bigger spheres and if we want to add variation to that simply you add some variation on size and we have scattered all these spheres on our plane and we can see the same in Houdini yeah Hope we will do that it's a little more complex but sure okay um, do you want to do the RBDs right away or do no you... maybe we can do this in Houdini and then we will jump into the okay, RBDs sounds here sounds good okay all right, so now that we're in Houdini, um, I didn't prepare much 
the scene, but basically it's an empty scene. So in Houdini we just create the geometry um, where we can manipulate any kind of geometries. And basically what we had was a plane, so we just create a grid, which is the same as a plane. Um, I don't remember the size, but it doesn't really matter for us right now. And to scatter points on a, on a plane in Houdini, there's a node called scatter. Um, and basically it put points on, uh, on whatever surface you give it. So you can plug in any object. So that's your surface position, so to say. But it also is your position born because it controls the amount of points. Now, keep in mind, we're not in a dynamic environment right now. We're just putting points onto... Um, that's like being in max and not in TP. Okay. Um, we could do this within Adop. There is, if you create Adop network, we can create a pop... Um, so you are saying it's like one second. it's magma flow. Yeah, not uh, or genome. Um, not pop stream. Uh, pop source. That was it. Pop source. So basically, this is your position born um, in TP, but it's also or it's your matter waves because you have. You can control scatter on surfaces, points, all geometry, all points, whatever you need. But this is now we can go up one level and then we can grab the grid uh, here. And if I now, now this dop object, it doesn't know what, what I want to do. This pop solver, uh, pop source doesn't know. It's a source, it generates points. It's like a. Um, uh, sub solver, so basically it's a sop within a dop. So we are going sop, dop, sop in here, and you have this gigantic tree. But somewhere in here, there is a scatter. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Where's the scatter? So it must be somewhere up here. Hmm. I saw it. No. Uh, so there's a scatter here. Um, yeah, so basically. Um, we can we can generate this up here and then drag that into DOPS and then simulate or we can inside the DOPS we can create a well let's just create the pop net it's much easier so we just call it pop uh, pop network and if I go inside here we see it creates a pop object which is your particle container that just waits, just creates um, startup variables. You have your solver, which is your kind of the TP background solver that, you know, um, increments age. And if you give it gravity, it moves the particle based on force and velocity and so on. So basically this guy calculates. And then here we have your pop source again. So this is the node that we just created. So there's two ways basically. But let's let's stay. Um, <laughs> Why you want to do it so complicated if you can do it with a little node? Um, because it depends on what you want to do later. Because if you if you now that we want to assign spheres, which we know later we will do RBD collision, uh -huh. we need to do it outside. If I mean. There would be a, ba a way to do it inside, it's a little bit more complex, but since we're doing just one level of um, RBD simulation, um, it's easier to do it outside. So, yeah. So now to assign a shape, there is nothing like a shape, um, shape node or anything in Houdini. What there is, is assign geometry to points. So basically there's an instancing tool. And like, that's doing instancing actually. So if you render, it will mm, really instancing the geometry. No, that's a little instancing in Houdini is is done a little different. So there's again, there's two. I think I know of two ways of instancing right off the bat. Um, but basically, there's packed primitives, and packed primitives are like V-Ray proxies. So you basically, I think we touched that last time. You basically take any geometry and then you say create a proxy out of it. So you have whatever proxy geometry, um, you can do bounding box, point, nothing, whatever you want, or full geometry, whatever you want to show in viewport. And, and then you have something that it loads it either from disk or from memory, but you can load it multiple times. So let's just quickly do this. So uh, if you want to copy anything onto points, 
there's different copy notes so um, usually um, you can do copy stamp which we'll have to do if we um, want to do scale I mean there's so many ways but the, the original Houdini way is copy stamp so um, because you did scale variation yeah. so what you do is you create your sphere and this is um, I don't know if you remember I said a, pr a sphere primitive so you see there's not no really polygons. Yeah, yeah there's no polygons and not really settings but you can switch it to polygon and now you have um, a primitive it's a north in max No, it's just pretty fine kind of objects. Um, I, w I think there is NURBS in Houdini, but okay. I don't, I don't think a sphere primitive is a NURB. No. Anyways, so in the left side you plug in whatever mesh you want, and on the right side you plug in the points that you need this to be instanced on or copied. Right now it's copied. It's copy. So. Um, if you look at that, you get um, 23 kilobytes, and then here you have 25, which is surprisingly low. I would expect it to be much more. But anyways, um, this is not instancing. Oh, it's because it's a primitive. So if I do polygons, now you have 34. And here you have like 1.7 megabytes, so it's much more. Um, okay, so now that we want to do different scaling, the original way would be on each point, um, you put your scale information. So the easy way is just do a um, So you do on f at p scale equals rand oh we start with the scripting now uh, at ptl so basically what you have now is a random value from 0 to 1 you, you don't have any other way to do that than with expression you do it because it's faster or uh, to, to me it's the easier way there's, there's different ways that is i mean come on well, yeah, but you know, coming from TP that we have like 10% uh, of a scale. Uh, let me see, I think there's a point and... Mm, no, not in here. Is it this? Maybe this. No. It's fine if you don't know how to do it. Uh, yeah. We can skip uh, that. Hey, <laughs> I showed you one way that works. So this is surprising. This is new in 16 point whatever, 5. Um, that it automatically recognizes P scale as your attribute. Um, usually this wouldn't happen. Like if you call this another attribute let's say my scale um, you see it doesn't know it doesn't realize hey that's what you want to scale um, so in in terms of p scale yeah you can just do p scale because it's so widely used that automatically this node recognizes that it needs to multiply the geometry um, size based on that but if you wanted any attribute to affect your scale what you can do is you can do stamping and stamping means in this loop for every single attribute I'm gonna affect something in this stream so you can have anything in this stream like a transform and, and then you can here you have a uniform scale but you could read this attribute into this for each sphere separately and then have that affected and for that what you need to do is you have to get p scale here um uh, sorry it was called my scale right my scale um so now this node knows about this uh, or basically exports kind of this attribute 
and you can grab it as a stamp. So you can go stamp, um, and then you go which node out of myself one up. Um, sorry, like this, and then go copy one. And then what is the attribute name? It is my scale. And then the default value, I think, zero. And this didn't work, of course. Um, stamp inputs, there you go. So you have to check on that it actually does that. Um, so now we get the same result, but with your own custom attribute. And now you can, you can do this with anything you want. You can apply the random colors, whatever you want. But you need to define this unif uh, variation outside of the transform itself. So you call the, yeah. the stamp. Yeah. Another way would be, so now this is copied, right? So every single geometry is separate. Um, if, you, if you wanted to, uh, it kind of making an instance, you need to pack the sphere. And you pack it before the scaling, obviously. Otherwise, your scale... Uh, well, you, What's the advantage of doing the packing? So the packing is basically creating your proxy object, like a V-Ray proxy. So now this sphere exists only once in memory, and uh, you see your your um, your memory size is much smaller. So 118 versus 2.4 megabytes. That will be the same as the shape uh, instance in the shape. Yeah, so the render you, instance, in TP render yeah, instance. So in here, uh, render yeah. instance. But I think only TP itself takes advantage of yes. that. Yes. So think. if you select this render instance, they call it render instance. But the only thing it's doing is that when you do the cache, if you have 5,000 uh, spheres, it will only cache one sphere right. on memory. Yeah, only TP itself. And I think final render can take advantage yes, of that. Yes, final render too. Yeah. It's but the only one. Max itself. Once it sends this to render, it doesn't realize that it sends th that as one giant object of yes. vertices. And so that's what they should fix in Max because it's hopefully one day uh, they are into it. It's gonna come but, yeah. sooner or later. Maybe we won't we won't um, see it see it in our lives, but who well. knows? Um, but anyways, so this is basically how you instance. But you can also do this um, do this on this node. The problem is if you do this on this node, um, this is being baked in. So if you put this, uh, if you put this underneath, you creating. Um, oh look at that! For some reason, the memory is small, but it doesn't make sense because every single geometry is different, and then it gets packed. So. So how it makes sense? Um, I, I'm not sure actually, but this is not a good way of packing. You would you would pack it underneath, and now you're changing the the instance um, on top. So for some reason, this works. But anyways, this is the easy fast way. And question: Do you you change the primitive to polygons? It but it will make any difference if you, instead of polygons you use primitive. Uh, for the rigid body dynamics after? No, uh, Houdini, Houdini works with this. Um, it works anyways. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, yeah, if you want perfect spheres, this is fine, but if you want anything else, mm -hmm. you, you yeah. don't work with that. Um, all right, so that would be the simple, easy, quick way. Man, uh, your easy, simple, quick way only takes four times more than TP way. Well, the explaining, the setup, I mean, look, six, <laughs> seven nodes. Okay, okay. Seven nodes versus and some scripting versus four nodes. Three. Four nodes. Uh, four. But you could have done that with two nodes with the matter waves. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, matter wave. It's like a more complex system, but I don't like normally to use it. I prefer to have more individual or small elements. All right. So the next step will be you to do the rigid body. Rigid body. Yes. So we stop.